Okay, so we looked at surface temperature. Uh, let's look at some other quantities here. Um, these are all global averages. Uh, we'll look at uh, the global average snow cover over time. And uh, we can see that's uh, expressed um, as uh, percentage, the percentage of the land surface area that's covered by snow. And that's what it looks like. If we look at the global average, that's the black curve. We can zoom in on that. We go from uh, 5 or so to uh, 12. Um, the global snow cover is decreasing in percentage from about 11% uh, in the annual mean to a little over 7% as we might expect. As the earth is warming, snow cover is decreasing. In fact, uh, that's one of the complementary observations that we looked at earlier in the course, um, that in addition to the warming of the earth, we see that global snow cover is decreasing. Um, that's just as uh, the models uh, projected to. Uh, as surface temperatures warm. We can, uh, no, I won't save that image. Uh, we could look at um, the ocean ice cover. And again, we'll focus in on the global mean. Um, so let's try to focus on that black curve. We'll go from a minimum of 1 to a maximum of 5. And that's the black curve is a global average uh, ice cover, and it is decreasing significantly as the Earth is warming, again, as we might expect. And as we s have seen in the observations, global ice cover is decreasing over time uh, fairly dramatically. Uh, Northern hemi hemisphere uh, snow cover, where we have widespread records, is decreasing significantly as the model projects it to. And, of course, surface temperatures are warming. So we can look at various uh, variables other than surface temperature in this model and get some sense of what else is going, what else is going on in this model, what else does this model project, that we could look to the observations and see if the things that the models project should happen as we increase CO2 concentrations are indeed happening. And why don't we take a look at um, global mean precipitation. And global mean precipitation is increasing. Um, it's uh, wetter over the oceans than it is over land. Um, and the global average, the average of land and ocean regions is the black curve. Uh, if we zoom in on that curve, okay, that uh, gives us an idea of how precipitation is changing. Precipitation in this case is expressed as millimeters per day and in the global average we've gone from a little over three millimeters of, uh, of uh, precipitation per day in 1958 to something approaching about three and a half millimeters of precipitation per day um, in 2012. So in the global average, precipitation is increasing. Um, that is also one of the robust projections of climate models. As we increase the surface temperature of the Earth, uh, warmer oceans evaporate more uh, water vapor into the atmosphere. The rate of evaporation increases. And to conserve water, that means that the rate of precipitation has to increase as well. In other words, we get a more vigorous hydrological cycle, faster evaporation and faster precipitation of water out of the atmosphere. And so the models project that global precipitation should increase. But what we saw previously um, in the observations was that, in fact, precipitation is a variable where there are very large regional differences. Uh, certain regions become wetter, but other regions become drier. And so uh, this is a case where looking at the global average, looking at a single time series, uh, is going to be somewhat misleading. Uh, we really need to go to the actual spatial patterns of response in the models to see uh, if we can make sense of what the model is uh, projecting. And so that's what we'll do next.